don't mind me, I'm gonna get a little bit of laundry done before it's showtime. Oh, this one must have been for blowing, not just for showing, but looks clean now. Ooh, I hope I can still return this one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I like it anymore. Ruh oh this one didn't make it onto the Klingon ship. Scotty! I am going to make it again, after all. All right, chores done. Ready for living figuratively. This is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people you don't even know? Living Figuratively is the show that asks, why not fill your home with figurative art? With your host, Judy Takas. Past couple weeks, we have been doing a three-part episode called The Bed, Bath, and Beyond. We've seen the bedroom, we've seen the bathroom, now we're going beyond. And guess where beyond is? Beyond is the laundry room, which, surprise, surprise, is chock full a figurative art also. So when we um, built this house and designed the laundry room, it was gonna be on the, the main floor. It wasn't a place I was gonna hide away because it was gonna be a useful space that I used a lot. Um, one of the things that we did was we did these laminate cabinets with um, this beautiful crown molding that goes all the way, all the way around. Crown molding really kind of just finishes off the space and it's not that much more. Once you're doing the cabinets, do the crown molding. Um, I, my little up above areas right there are a lot of uh, curated clutter that I like to do. That's one of, my, uh, one of my things. And I've got all kinds of antique relics of household, whoops, household, um, items and housekeeping items from days gone by. And I've got like old toasters, I've got old garbage cans, I've got old washboards and things like that. And ironically, I have old irons. And over here, we have a little curated clutter area where I have showcased this lovely drawing of an iron that my oldest son did back in high school and I found it and framed it up and it perfectly complements the, uh, the ironic area and it's ironic because I'm not a big ironer and also because there are no working irons in my laundry room and there's no working ironing board either. That's all up in my uh, studio for no good reason just sitting there. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to do in my laundry room was this little ledge area. A while ago, probably eight years ago, okay, I went to my friend Sharon's house, and Sharon is the one who is on the Chicks with Balls postcard. She's the poster woman for the Chicks with Balls show that's currently closed down right now at the Zanesville Museum of Art. But she, I saw her very nonchalantly do this casual laundry thing where she just squirted the laundry detergent right into the laundry machine. And I thought, whoa, that is what I want to do. I want to have that be in my life. So eight years later, I was living the dream and I built, you know, had built this beautiful little ledge, which was another opportunity for curated clutter and an opportunity to put figurative art up. On the wall there, I have a pastel painting from a time when I um, chose my pastel paper to match the colors of my house so that I could, you know, if I accidentally did a great drawing on it, I'd frame it up and it would already go with the house. It's kind of like matching your couch. But when you're a painter yourself, you can, you can do it. It's not a, this insulting thing like, oh, the painting should match my couch. Um, I also put this, lovely little barn wood framed charcoal life drawing into my, not even curated clutter, but my pro product, product area, where you can see the products of my choice. Way, way, way up high, I put um, 
this is a drawing that I actually just, or a painting that I actually just framed up. It was, has been on my online shop, unframed, but now it's framed. It's called Just Being, and she is available so she can be, just be at your home if you check her out and get her from my online shop. All right, I'm gonna swing around here to this little area. I've got a couple closets which we put into the laundry room, which it's awesome. The more closet space you have, the better, because you can shove things behind the closets, into the closets. Um, I put these two pieces of art here in a formation that I call birthday cake, I'm sorry, that I call wedding cake, where you've got a big one on the bottom and one that's a little bit smaller right on top of it. I have them mostly at eye level, and my eye level, I'm five foot four, so I like to see things pretty low. Um, and that's something to think about also, you know, you hang it to sort of the height level of your family, always keeping in mind the shortest people, because the shortest people can, you know, see it easily, and taller people can do like a giraffe thing and sort of, you know, crouch down if you want to see it. So up on top is a Alla Prima drawing from Life Drawing that I did um, probably maybe a year ago. And I just loved it for its simplicity. This was a beautiful model who, um, you know, she had a, like a lovely tranquility to her. And it's such a nice small painting. It's only six by six. It, literally, you can hang it anywhere. And which is exactly what I did with the wedding cake configuration and on top of this horsey. So where did I get this horsey from? It's not one of mine. I didn't do it. Um, this horsey I actually found at an antique mall. And I think it was in Maumee, Ohio, um, when I was on my way up to Michigan one time. And when I buy, find a piece of art at an antique shop or at a thrift shop or something like that, um, I kind of have two criteria for it. It has to be good and it has to be real. And also reasonably priced. But the good is up to the beholder. Um, I thought I loved this pure kitschiness of this of this horsey. I just thought it was kind of cool, and I loved the way that it was framed up in kind of a kitschy kind of a way. Um, the real aspect of it, I found proof of that on the back. There was this nice little sticker on the back, and I'm going to read it to you. The sticker on the back says. It is a genuine watercolor painted with an airbrush, stylized and decorative. This type of picture is used by leading interior decorators in any period or modern setting. So you can hang this horsey anywhere. Note how the colors blend with current rugs and fabrics. I'm not sure what the year was that they blend with the current rugs and fabrics, but I found a way to incorporate it into my laundry room and the reason that I hung these two together is there's this nice patch of flat red there she's got this nice patch of flat red and I thought that the two kind of related to each other and made that corner seam so I'm gonna head on over round the bend here all right this beauty right here is called power and this one, um, I love the verticality of it. It fit perfectly into this spot. It is um, a depiction of one of the life drawing models that we have in the area who does, he's a bodybuilder, and he does these amazing Frank Franzetta, Conan the Barbarian muscular poses with a lot of props. He brings a whole you know, wagon full of props when he comes to pose. This one, he was minimal on the props. He wasn't doing too much. It was a longer pose, so it wasn't quite as uh, acrobatic of a pose. But this, the way that I've treated this and the medium of this is one of the things that I was talking about last week where I seal, magically seal a life drawing, which is behind there, onto board. And then I primed it with, um, this is actually house paint from another room in our house, so this actually would match other, you know, other areas too. Um, and and then I did the the oil painting, life drawing onto it, and so it's all it's all sealed. Though this room doesn't really get a lot of, you know, the moisture that a shower would get. But that's the that's the way that I have power. Now I'm gonna 
pan over here. This is not curated clutter. This is just clutter, but in the cubbies. So, you know, at least it's clutter with a place to go. And bring you over here to this lovely, lovely area and lovely painting of this beautiful woman. Um, this painting is called Sister Sharon, Quiet Joy. And it is one of the paintings that I did when I spent an extended time um, going every week to paint the retired sisters of Notre Dame at their assisted living facility. This was a couple years ago. Um, my mom had been a professor at Notre Dame College and she taught with some of these retired sisters. And so when you retire from sort of the active service work of being a nun, you get to go to this absolutely wonderful assisted living facility that they have there. Uh, it, it was, um, it, it's this wonderful little female communal working community where basically as long as you're able to do something, the more, you know, the, the, the more healthy and able-bodied uh, sisters take care of the ones who are less healthy and less able to take care of themselves until they become less able and then there's other you know younger younger nuns to take care of them it's really this beautiful symbiotic relationship um where you're always paying things forward and um and now of course the nun population is going way 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 down so it, it, it's 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 tricky but um when when i went there it was it was wonderful and it was a painting project that I, I began, uh, my mom hooked me up with the, with the whole deal. And um, I, was a little bit, I was a little bit nervous about meeting regularly with these nuns because my, you know, I think I said before, my religious affiliation or whatever is, um, I am a, a free thinker who believes in peace, love, and respect. That might also be labeled as, you know, a heathen or somebody that is ripe to be saved and all that kind of stuff. I'm also very pro-choice. I'm also pro, you know, marriage equality. I'm also pro a lot of the things that the Catholic Church is against. So I definitely wanted to not have this be a antagonistic type situation. I wanted to kind of stay off these topics and so we could have a pleasant painting experience and you know because I don't like to paint when I'm kind of angry and arguing and I also didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings and you know they're they're old ladies and stuff and they were they were so it was amazing how sweet they were to me and how accepting they were of whatever views I had and I didn't get on my soapbox but I also didn't feel suppressed I didn't feel like you know, I, I couldn't say what I what I wanted to say, um, and it was it was really a wonderful experience. Sister Sharon was one of the ones who posed, and she very obligingly put on the uh, the nun headdress for the painting. When I first um, put together the you know the whole concept of painting the nuns. I, uh, I had imagined all these old, sweet, old faces with wrinkles and everything peeking out from the black habit and then the white habit or the white part of it. Um, so I was thinking like sort of, you know, black, white, and flesh were sort of my, my palette. I was surprised that most of the, the nuns or most of the sisters did not wear the nuns headgear and almost none of them wore the complete, the complete habit. Um, but they did, they did all have the same cross because that's sort of the signature cross for the Notre Dame, uh, the Notre Dame community. Um, and she obliged and put on the headdress. Sister Sharon also had suffered a stroke a couple of years before. So she was very, very quiet. Like she didn't really speak very much. She did exude this amazing, positive, joyous spirit though. So. Painting her really was a joy, and um, this painting is available as a same size G clay because it's a pretty small, it's a pretty small canvas. It's only like 12 by 16, and the original painting is also available, all of which are uh, designed to bring peace and joy to your life, laundry room or otherwise. All right, let's pan over 
to the piece that's on the uh, Facebook event page invitation. This one above here, um, it's called Judge, Jury, and Executioner. And it was painted uh, during another time when I went to my local senior center and I spent about a year going every week to paint the seniors at my local senior center. And here again, it was so, so, so fun painting the older folks. They just have so much more character in their faces. Um, I, I had, when I went there to, to, do, to do their paintings, I was really very much influenced by Norman Rockwell. I was looking at my Norman Rockwell book every single morning. He is just the, the master of expressions. And coming out of my illustration background, Norman Rockwell was like, you know, one of the, the illustration gods, which, you know, he, because he's awesome. Um, so I tried to get a lot of the seniors to do different expressions that I could have fun painting. And uh, some of them took to it like, with relish and joy and delight. Like they were like, oh, I love to do, you know, they love doing the expressions. Other ones were kind of out of their element and I let them do sleeping poses or I just let them be really, really still and, you know, whatever, whatever they were comfortable with. Uh, Marilyn, who posed for Judge Jureen Executioner, was an awesome actress. She really was able to do these, these gorgeous poses. And I had so, so, so much fun with her. Um, and I came up with three, three beautiful poses, and I called it Judge, Jury, and Executioner because she really looked like a very judge, judgy kind of person, even though that is not how she was in real life. In real life, she was very sweet and educated and very charming. And, um, and I just, just love, love, love painting her. Uh, from that particular project where I spent a year there, I came away with probably about 30 paintings of um, older folks and they are all published in this book that I did called Age of Adventure because the age of adventure is when you get old, you get to do all these adventures. Many of these seniors were, you know, living the dream. They were doing all kinds of, all kinds of things. Um, this book is also available on my website and uh, I will sign it personally, personally for you. And I'm just gonna do a little, little quick flip through What's with all the faces, beautiful faces and beautiful people that I painted in there. Um, and I think we might just be, we might be just out of time. All right, I am, thank you, I'm gonna thank you for joining me for Living, living Figuratively today. Next week, next week we will be, um, we're done with Bed Bath & Beyond. Next week is going to be Book Look, week where we're going to look at books that you don't have to read. You just have to look at them. Guess what those books are full of? Figurative art. And like I said, like I say at the end of every episode, um, any art that you buy here on uh, Living Figuratively during these Corona times, I will pay forward into the 50% of the profits forward into the struggling art community right now and it's all they're all on my website so check out all the things we've talked about and um i will see you next week i am looking forward to looking forward to it 6 p next same time same bad time same bad channel 6 p.m eastern standard time thursday nights for living figuratively y'all come back now you hear <laughs>